Harder training does not equal better training. Yes, that means those super hard, slow, grindy reps near failure probably aren't doing a whole lot for your strength gains, and in fact, they're likely holding you back. A few years ago, I used to train exactly how you're training now. I'd follow those intermediate programs like 5x5, 531, or I would just write my own training. And a lot of it was really high effort stuff. So I was doing sets of five that were really close to failure, where the last rep is really slow and grindy. And because of that, I felt beat up all the time. I dreaded my training sessions. And every week it felt impossible to add any more weight on the bar because I'd put on 2.5 kilos. And before I know it, I'm (laughs) failing reps. Now, if that sounds anything like you, let me teach you a better way. And in this video, I'll help you learn from my mistakes and get stronger than it took me so you can save a bunch of time and get better results in the gym. So in this video, I'll give you three solid reasons why training close to failure and doing super hard sets is probably why you are not getting as strong as you want to. So reason number one is the fitness fatigue model. And some of you might have heard of this and I'll simplify it and make it really easy to understand. So basically, in order for you to get strong long term, we need to apply a stress, which is lifting weights. We then recover from that stress in some capacity and then adaptations take place and you get stronger. You're able to put more weight on the bar. It's that simple, basically. Now, in order for you to actually get stronger, we need to be able to recover from that training stress. Now, I saw someone use the example of like getting a suntan, like going outside in the sun. And if you went and sat outside in the sun for like 14 hours one day, you would burn, obviously. So instead, what you would do is you go out in the sun for maybe two or three hours on the first time. And then your skin gets a little bit darker. The next day, maybe you do it again and again. And each time, maybe you spend a little bit more time out in the sun and the tan starts to get darker and darker. Now, every time you do those training sessions where you push your sets really hard, really close to failure... That's the equivalent of like sitting out in the sun for like an entire day and burning. You can't recover from the stress. It's too much stress at once. So you can see why you don't want to train super, super hard because you have to be able to recover from it. Any idiot can go in the gym and do 10 sets of 10 to failure and feel really accomplished, but it doesn't get you any stronger because you don't recover from it. You're crippled and sore for a week afterwards. So once you kind of understand this process, it makes the whole the whole path of getting stronger is so simple because every single time you train, there are two outputs to your training session. Output number one is stimulus. Output number two is fatigue. When you train super, super hard, yes, you get this really high stimulus, but you also get really high fatigue and the fatigue ends up masking that stimulus and you can never put any weight on the bar, adapt and get stronger. What we want long term is high stimulus and fatigue to be managed so that it falls below the stimulus. We recover and we keep adapting and getting stronger. So hopefully that tells you why you don't want to be training crazy hard every single session and why this whole mentality of like harder equals better is holding you back. Reason number two is failure training is disproportionately fatiguing. So basically when you're doing these really hard sets really close to failure, the fatigue cost is so high but the stimulus you get is actually minor. So if you're doing a few hard sets per week that are like RPE 5, 6, 7, and if you don't know what RPE is, it's basically a 1 through 10 scale that measures the effort of your sets. So RPE 10 is failure, RPE 9 is 1 rep in reserve, RPE 8 is 2 reps in reserve, and so on. So if we were to do quite a lot of sets at like RPE 5, 6, 7, maybe 8 sometimes, those sets are hard enough that we generate stimulus, stimulus, sorry, We get the benefit of lifting heavier weights, but we don't burn ourselves out and touch those really high intensity sets that are causing all of the fatigue. So if you view it as like RP5, 6, 7, 8 is giving you a good dose of stimulus and manageable fatigue, then when you push those RP 9s and 10s, that's when the fatigue blows up and there's barely any more stimulus you're getting from those sets. So it's really not worth the trade-off. You'd be better off just staying in the more moderate intensities, touching the harder intensities maybe periodically at the end of your training blocks. That way you can still have skill practice of the heavier lifts, manage fatigue and train more productively for more of the year. The way I like to set that up is I'll increase intensity through a training block. So let's say your training block is five weeks in length. Week one might be RPE 5, RPE 6, 7, 8, and then maybe we touch those RPE 9s on week five at the block. So it limits how often you're exposed to those super high efforts. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, reason number three is 
force, the, the equation of force and specificity. So I don't want to bore you with too much science because on this channel, I really like to break down a lot of these concepts and make it really easy for you to understand and apply it. So let's talk briefly just a bit about the, a little bit of the science behind failure training. So most of you are probably familiar with this idea of effective reps for hypertrophy, right? And the idea is basically that um, like only the last five reps in the set really count towards hypertrophy. So you need to train super hard or you won't really get much muscle growth. Now, a lot of people try and apply that to their strength training. And I think that's why a lot of you aren't seeing the results you want. Because strength training and hypertrophy training are very different things. Yes, they complement each other well, but to maximize one or the other, we need to train in very different ways. If you try and apply this failure training effective reps model to your strength lifts, you won't make the progress you want. And let me explain why. So a lot of people have this idea that the last reps of the set are the really productive ones. And that's why they go and train their squat, their bench, their deadlift really close to failure. And they feel really accomplished and productive if they're hitting like those really super hard sets. What's actually happening is you're not training in a way that's specific to a one rep max and you're picking up a ton of fatigue along the way. So what is the goal here? We're training for one rep max strength, right? We want a stronger squat, bench, deadlift, one rep max. That's what we care about. What is a one rep max? It's a test of maximal force production. Now, force is mass times acceleration. That's the, the physics equation for it. Force equals MA. So those grindy reps that you're doing, those really slow ones, you are producing less force because there is less acceleration. So... When you let's say you're doing a set of five super hard to failure, those earlier reps in the set are actually the more productive ones because you're producing more force. The later ones in the set, you're producing less force and getting more fatigue as a result. Think about that for a second and hopefully it makes sense to you. But there is some good evidence and Data Driven Strength have a really good article on this. It's called Rethinking Proximity to Failure. You can go ahead and click the link here. But basically, those reps further away from failure are the more effective ones because you produce more force and they are more specific to a one rep max and they allow you to recover more effectively because the fatigue cost is lower. That means you can train the main lifts more productively, you can train them more frequently at higher volumes and still recover. Now, we don't want to go to the extreme of that idea and do like speed training or west side conjugate style training because then you're leaning too far towards the acceleration component of that equation. Then you're just doing speed work and the adaptations from that, they're, they're conflicting to what we want. It's, we need a balance in the middle between mass acceleration. So enough weight to produce adaptations, but not so heavy that we're picking up a ton of fatigue and producing low force. Have a think about that concept a second and just it might challenge a few of your ideas about training and strength training. But once you start to make sense of it, your training will be far more productive. So this would basically lead me to recommend you that you do most of your volume in the 60 to 75 percent range for sets of four to six reps. That kind of intensity range is going to have you leaving like five, 10 reps in the tank. And you might think that's way too easy. I'm not going to get strong off that. But again, view it as stress. We don't care how hard the sets are, how how hard you feel like you're working. View your training in stress. We apply stress, we recover from it, we adapt. So we find a dose of training that you respond well to. Adaptations take place and you get stronger. If it's working, you don't need to go heavier, right? Even on my strongest training blocks, I'm doing top sets on the deadlift at like 290, 300 kilos. I'm doing my back off work at 180 to 200 for sets of four to six reps. I can probably do those weights for like 30 reps, but it's sufficient stress for me to get stronger. And then I can deadlift twice a week, recover and adapt. So what about hypertrophy, muscle growth and stuff like that? So like I said, hypertrophy training, strength training are two different things. For muscle growth, yes, we want to train our sets harder, closer to failure, really pushing towards RP 9s and 10s. We want to be grinding weights and we want the, the bar velocity to be slowing down because we want to recruit enough motor units and muscle fibers to actually cause growth to happen. Now, you don't want to apply that to your strength training. So I would recommend that you train your main lifts for strength and I would use a top set back off approach for the most part. So do a heavy top set on your strength work a couple of times a week for skill practice at heavier loads. Do your back off work at lower percentages in the 60 to 75% range for most people. And I would say four to six sets of four to six reps. 
You can experiment obviously with individual response. Some of you will need lighter, some of you will need heavier, but that's a good range to work in. And then you can push your bodybuilding stuff super hard afterwards on machines, cables, dumbbells, because those exercises are inherently, inherently, if I can speak, less stressful because they're like, just compare going and setting up on a barbell bench press, doing your whole setup, thinking about technique, bar path, grip versus just sitting on a chest press machine and banging out three sets of eight, right? They're, they're far, far different stresses. So you can push your bodybuilding super hard, but train the strength lifts a bit more intelligently. Now, you're probably thinking like, how the hell do we put all this into practice? If you want me to do it for you, click the top link in the description. You can take my strength course or hire me as your coach. If not, let me explain. So my recommendations are train the main lifts, the squat, bench, deadlift frequently enough that you feel practiced at them. So for most people, that's going to have you squatting one to three times a week benching three or four times a week yes that high you can see a full video on bench frequency here or uh, sorry and deadlifting once or twice a week then do regular top sets on squat bench deadlift for skill practice at heavier loads so that's going to be one to three reps at rpe five to nine and you can increase the intensity of that through your blocks those top sets serve to um to give you skill practice at heavier loads, low velocity strength production, and for you to actually add weight to the bar over time. Then do the bulk of your back down volume in the 60 to 75% range for like, let's say three to six sets of four to six reps for the most part, leaving multiple reps in reserve. So this checks all the boxes of effective strength training. We get skill practice, we get high intensity specific skill work, we get fatigue management because our back downs are lower intensity and we get long-term muscle growth because we're pushing our bodybuilding super hard on lower stress movements. So hopefully these ideas make sense to you and you can go and apply them to your own training and improve your results immediately in the gym. Thank you for watching. If you need any more help, like I said, click the top link in the description to work with me or to sign up for my strength course and I'll catch you on the next one.